Friday, you know, we have to find ways to schedule our time appropriately. And as adults, we know what it feels like to be overextended. But here's the question. Are your kids following in your footsteps? How healthy is it for your child to be booked solid? We know for ourselves sometimes that's difficult. So when you're thinking about your children, you really have to put in perspective what's important. And Barbara Zinger is here to tell us how to avoid overscheduling your child. Welcome back, Barbara. Thanks, how are you? <laughs> I'm so happy to have you back here. Great information, you know, about relationships last time, and now mm -hmm. we're talking about the relationships between your parents and children and how we can make sure the kids do not get overextended. And now with the new school year beginning, yes. ah, we lead to a lot of overscheduling. So what is it that leads to that? I think it leads to I think part of it is the kids and also part of it is the parents. You mm -hmm. know, the kids go back to school and they're like, Mom, I want to do this. Mom, I want to do that. Right. Mom, I want to do this. And the parents are also like, you know, we don't want you to get in trouble. So we're going to make sure that you are, you know, you're in, in dance and in football and in baseball and in right. basketball and in music and in drama. And so I think that, point. you know, there's pushing from both ends. Sure. And that's sometimes what leads to overscheduling. Probably also pressure from the other kids, too. If some friends are doing this and some friends are doing that the kids want to jump in and get involved yeah yeah exactly you know because some kids are like well you know mom so and so's doing this and I want to try this and the next thing you know there's this list of things that everybody's doing and mm -hmm. you know there's just no time for that right so here's the main question is we want to find the solution to this so how should parents actually prioritize the activities obviously school being number one well parents have to remember what kind of time they have mm -hmm. and how many kids they have <laughs> right that's true <laughs> and what kind of commitment it will be if you choose to do something like football well football starts earlier than school right and sometimes if it's an older child practice is two is twice a day mm -hmm. um, and so you know you have to kind of think about what what kind of time commitment you can make as well as what kind of time commitment your child can make and sometimes that's a little difficult to kind of keep together. That's a very good point. And I guess, you know, in, in conjunction with that, when you're looking at your own schedule and then you look at your kid's schedule, you mm -hmm. just have to be able to find a balance of how to make both work so that they can be happy, but you can actually commit to things and stick to them. Yes. Because yes. that's probably the biggest problem. So how would the parent, okay, so let's look at it practically. How would the parent actually build a schedule that works for the entire family? How would they do that? Well, the parents have to make sure that they know, first of all, their own schedule. Because, you know, parents, sometimes they work until five. Sure. Um, if you're fortunate and you don't have to work, <laughs> then, you know, scheduling is pretty easy. Okay. But, so you have to kind of think about if my child has to, if, you know, if child one has to be here mm -hmm. at two o'clock and child two has to be here at 2.15, mm -hmm. you know, is that going to work for me? If everybody is out doing something in their schedule five days a week, mm -hmm. When are you going to have downtime? When are you going to have homework time? When are you going to have chores time? When are you going to have time to take care of family? Right, right. And so sometimes it's a little difficult to keep that kind of together. So you really have to find the priorities as well as find the time and make sure it all kind of works together. Yes. And so now another problem would be, of course, that sometimes the parents might say, hey, let's do this because I can't do that. And then the kids end up fighting with them. So how do they find a way to agree on the activities they choose? Well, parents and children, I think they both have to kind of sit down and say, okay, why do you want to do this activity? What is mm. the activity that you want and why do you want to do it? That makes sense. And if you know if you schedule your child like if your child says well you know Susie's doing dance so I want to do dance okay so you and Susie are friends so you know if your parents are agreeable then that's fine then and she carpool. gets to go and and they can carpool mm -hmm. and then there's a little bit of less time for you know for well I want to do this and I want to do this and I want to do that so you have to stay focused on okay you right. get one to three activities so one to three that was going to be my next question how many should they you know so three you would say would be the maximum I would say three would be the maximum okay. depending on what kind of time commitment it is okay. you know like we've talked about if you you know if you're doing something at school mm -hmm. do you have to practice at home Mm, you know, so point. if your child is playing a musical instrument, they have to come home and practice. Right. Well, that sometimes takes a lot of time. All and right. also, it's hard to get your child to continue to practice at, at home. You know, they're like, well, I, I was the in school when I practiced. The discipline isn't always there. Yeah, and right. discipline is sometimes difficult.
Right, right. Well, that's why sometimes kids get really overwhelmed is because they feel so disciplined yes. and over-disciplined. So how would a parent be able to tell the signs of an overwhelmed child? Well, kids who are overwhelmed, are they're going to do a couple of things. Okay. Either they're going to just shut down mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and get angry and say, you know what, Mom, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> you Which know, is bad. No, I'm not. They'll have all these excuses. They'll, um, you know, they might cry. They might throw a fit. They might be like, well, I'm not going. You know, so there get might be rebellious. a lot of... Yeah, a lot of fighting and, and disagreement within the house. Or, you know, kind of the other end is they just won't say anything and you'll sort of notice a little, like kind of a tensing oh. and, you know, oh, I'm fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Almost like a close, like almost a wall. Yeah, okay. almost kind of like a, oh, it's fine. Don't, yeah, I'm mm. good. I'm good. And and that sometimes is a more difficult place to be because the kid doesn't want to disappoint himself right. or his parents. Right. And, you know, I think the problem is when they get overwhelmed, they don't get enough downtime. And, and yeah. downtime is really important, isn't it? Downtime is very important. It's really funny because you have to schedule unstructured time. Mm -hmm. you, you really know, do. You, know, <laughs> you really which do. Which is kind of interesting. But you have to say to your kids, okay, you know, so here's this, here's this, and you know what, you have an hour, you can do whatever you want. If you want to watch TV, if you want to play video games, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to go lay down in your room, take a nap, whatever, that's fine. Good point. But it's very, very important to have unstructured time in your structure. <laughs> right, structure the unstructured. <laughs> right. You kind of have to. And if people want to come in and see you and talk about how they can maybe deal with their own schedules and prioritize, let's tell all our viewers how they can contact you. Okay. Um, they can contact me at 505 Two one six six seven seven zero, and they can also website, right? check out my website at uh, www.santafezen.com. Fabulous, Barbara Singer. We're so happy to have you back. Great information Good as to see always. You again. And with kids going back to school, make sure that yes, structure the unstructured along with those activities. <laughs> and if you've got the eye of the tiger, hmm, or even if you don't, there's a new business in town that will make you feel like a champ. We'll tell you all about it coming up next.